Hi everyone. I hope you all following my videos. In the last video I have taught about Arithmia part 1. In the Arithmia part 1 it was dealt with Sinus Arithmia and Atrial Arithmia. In this section move on to Arithmia part 2. Here I deal with atrioventricular arrhythmia and junctional arrhythmia. The first condition is atrioventricular junctional premature contraction. The causes of this disease are rheumatic heart disease, coronary heart disease, hypertension, hypothyroidism and heart failure. And the major symptoms like usually it is uh, asymptomatic that is many patients have no symptoms and some have the symptoms like palpitation and chest discomfort. Treatment for this condition is needing any therapy that is patients without any underlying heart disease they don't have don't, don't need to follow any of the treatment modalities or patients with any heart disease like coronary disease rheumatic heart disease and all then they may be treated with beta blockers, propofenone and verapamil. Then non-paroxysmal AV junctional tachycardia. Non-paroxysmal AV junctional tachycardia, the mechanism is which is related to hyperautomaticity or trigger activity of AV junctional tissue. That is if you uh, refer my previous videos, I have discussed about the normal cardiac conduction system as well as and the normal ECG and all. So when you see that you can understand how the normal conduction pathway. But here in non paroxysmal AV junction tachycardia the mechanism is there is a hyper automaticity or trigger activity of AV junctional tissue that will lead to the non paroxysmal AV junction tachycardia. The etiological factors like Digitalis toxicity, inferior wall myocardial infection, myocarditis, acute rheumatic fever, and post that is postoperative valve disease, that is patients undergone valve surgeries. Then on ECG, the ECG findings include on ECG you can understand that the heart rate ranges from 70 to 150 beats per minute. Our normal heart rate supposed to be between 60 to 100 beats per minute. But when it comes to uh, non-paroxysmal AV junction tachycardia, the heart rate will be ranges from 70 to 150 beats per minute or more. Then the ECG rhythm will be regular and normal QRS complex may occur AV dissociation that is atrioventricular dissociation and wengi back atrioventricular block. The treatment for this disease, regarding the treatment, treat the underlying disease. So find out what is the exact root cause for the disease and treat the root cause. Then if it is because of digoxin toxicity means stop digoxin. Administer potassium if it is because of hypokalemia. Then administer lidocaine that is antiarrhythmitrol, phenendoin and propanolol. Propanolol is a beta blocker. Yeah. Further, it can disappear spontaneously and if you had a good tolerance, no need of any treatment. Next is paroxysmal tachycardia. Then most paroxysmal supraventral tachycardia is due to re entrant mechanism. Then the incident rate of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia is higher in atrioventricular no reandral tachycardia and atrioventricular reandral tachycardia. The most common is about 90% of cases come up with atrioventricular no reandry tachycardia. The, when, when you see about the incidence rate, it occurs any age individuals usually no structural heart disease. The manifestations like 
it usually occurs abruptly and other manifestations the patient come up with palpitation dizziness syncope angina and heart failure and shock as you know about this arrhythmia when there is a increasing heart rate usually there is a palpitation that is increased heartbeat then dizziness syncope and all because of when there is a increasing heart rate that is heart contracts more fastly there is a decrease the ventricular filling as well as decreased cardiac output so the vital perfusions will be decreased so the patient experts with dizziness and syncope angina because of decreasing myocardial perfusion and further it deal with the some of them present with heart failure as well as shock the severe degree of the symptom is related to ventricular rate persistent duration and the underlying disease the ecg character of atrial ventricular node reentry tachycardia is the heart rate is between 150 to 250 beats per minute and the rhythm is regular then when you see the qrs complex qrs complex is often normal certain times it is a wide qrs complex is with the aberrant conduction then see we can see the negative p wave in second third and avf in the ecg leads second leads third and avf we can visible negative p wave that is buried into o followed by qrs complex then ecg character of atrial ventricular reentry tachycardia here also the heart rate is 150 to 250 and the rhythm is regular in orthodromic atrial ventricular reentry tachycardia the qrs complex is often normal and wide qrs complex with the antidromic atrial ventricular reentry tachycardia here also the retrograde p wave or r to p the duration is more than 100 milliseconds the treatment for atrial ventricular node reentry tachycardia and the orthodromic atrial ventricular reentry tachycardia first one is increase increase vagal tone that is increase vagal tone we can do by carotid sinus massage and valsalva maneuver so usually increase vagal tone vagal tone that is a vagal stimulus we generate vagal stimulus that is by carotid sinus massage otherwise valsalva maneuver then if not successful we administer drugs drugs like verapamil adenosine and propofenone and dc shock that is even with the drugs if the condition we cannot revert the condition then move on to the dc shock then antidromic atrial ventricular reentry tachycardia the treatment includes should not use verapamil digitalis and stimulate the vagal nerve here we can use the drugs like propofenone sotalol and amiodarone another important treatment option is radio frequency catheter ablation that is high frequency waves we transmit and we remove the root cause from the by catheter ablation so paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia the ecg rhythm ecg figure shows like this here the deviation from normal sinus rhythm is the heart rate suddenly speed up often triggered by premature atrial contraction and the p waves are no are lost so next category of arrhythmia is ventricular arrhythmia first one is premature ventricular contractions the etiology for premature ventricular contraction is 
it occurs in even in normal person because of any triggering factors the underlying pathological conditions are myocarditis coronary artery disease valvular heart disease hypothyroidism drug toxicity that is especially digoxin cunidin and anti anxiety drugs then other cause like electrolyte disturbances anxiety alcoholism and coffee intake coffee alcohol this and all as stimulate so that will induce for the premature ventricular contractions the manifestations are patient presented with palpitation dizziness syncope loss of the second heart sound and the treatment option for premature ventricular contraction is treat the underlying disease and administer antiarrhythmic drugs so if there is no any structural heart disease the patient may be asymptomatic or no therapy then symptom symptoms caused by premature ventricular contractions that is if it is anti uh, administer anti anxiety agents beta blocker mexilatin to relieve the symptoms then patients presented with the structural heart disease especially patient have coronary heart disease hypertension valvular heart disease myocarditis and all treat the underlying disease and administer beta blocker and amiodarone then uh, in such cases we should we should not give class 1 especially class 1c agents to avoid the proarrhythmic effect then the ecg shows ectopic beats originate in the ventricles this is what the yeah so ectopic that is yeah, ectopic beats originate in the ventricles resulting in white bizarre qrs complex the graph it is visible and then when there are more than one more than one premature beat and look alike they are called uniform and when they are look different they are called multiform premature ventricular contraction next one is a ventricular tachycardia the etiological factor often in organic heart disease that is because of underlying heart disease most of it is accompanied the conditions like coronary heart disease myocardial infarction dilated cardiac myopathy hypertrophic cardiac myopathy and heart failure and long qt syndrome as you know long qt syndrome it is a abnormal heart rhythm where there is a qt interval is prolonged and fast heart beat then sustained vt more than 30 second or non sustained vt then monomorphic vt and polymorphic vt that is these are the main underlying etiology for the ventricular tachycardia another condition comes in this torsade is the point that is a, a special type of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia then etiology is is a congenital factor that is because of long qt syndrome and electrolyte disturbance anti arrhythmic drug that is pro arrhythmia anti anxiety drugs certain brain disease bradycardia next one is accelerated idioventricular rhythm this accelerated idioventricular rhythm that is related to increase automatic tone of the activity so etiology is it often occur along with the organic heart disease like acute myocardial infarction that is especially during the reperfusion periods then cardiac surgeries that is heart operation myocarditis and digitalis toxicity the manifestations include non sustained ventricular tachycardia with the no symptoms and sustained ventricular tachycardia with the symptoms 
an unstable hemodynamic that is there is a unstable hemodynamic that is uh, hemostability will be varied then patient may feel palpitation shortness of breath pre syncope syncope angina hypotension and shock the ecg characteristics shows in in case of monomorphic vt patient have 100 to 250 beats per minute occur and terminate abruptly when rhythm is regular then accelerator idioventricular rhythm a run of 3 to 10 ventricular beats and the rate of 60 to 110 beats per minute tachycardia is capable of warm up and close down often seen av dissociation fusion or capture beats then torsade is point that is rotation of the qrs axis around the baseline and the heart rate is from 160 to 280 beats per minute qt interval is prolonged that is more than 0 0.5 seconds and there is a marked u wave This is the one picture ECG shows the ventricular tachycardia. Here the impulse is originating in the ventricles, no P wave and it is a wider QRS complex. Treatment for ventricular tachycardia. So first and foremost is treat the underlying disease. Then second option is cardioversion. In cardioversion, the hemodynamic unstable VT that is hypotension shock angina or congestive heart failure or hemodynamic stable but drug was not effect then we move on with the cardioversion as you know cardioversion is a synchronized electrical shock then pharmacological therapy like beta blockers lidocaine and amedrol and anti-arrhythmic agents then icd icd in the sense implantable cardioverter defibrillator or any other surgical treatment supposed to be do according to the underlying root cause then accelerated idioventricular rhythm that is usually no symptoms so there is no need of any therapy so drug of choice atropin increase the sinus rhythm If in case of torsade is the point, treat the underlying cause. Here we give magnesium intravenously, atropine or isoprenaline, beta blocker or pacemaker for long QT syndrome patients. And apply temporary pacemaker. Next one is a ventricular flutter or ventricular fibrillation. So, ventricular flutter, otherwise ventricular fibrillation often occurs in severe organic heart disease like a acute myocardial infarction, ischemic heart disease. Then pro arrhythmia, especially produce long QT and torsadis point and electrolyte disturbance due to anesthesia or lightning strike, electric shock or under, undergone. Uh, that is a cardiac surgeries. So, ventricular fibrillation of the flutter, that is a fatal arrhythmia. The manifestations like the patient seems unconscious, twitch, no blood pressure and pulse, and going to die. And the treatment is. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation that is CPR. Uh, here I am not discussing more about CPR because in the following this one videos I will discuss about the CPR. And implantable cardioverter defibrillator. The ECG shows like this that is that is completely abnormal electrical rhythm. I hope you understand about this AV junction arrhythmia as well as ventricular arrhythmia. Follow the channel as well as subscribe it. Thank you.